All right. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Eric Watchman, part of the WWH Financial Group with the CI Asante Wealth Management, and very excited to have with us Alex Keller from uh, Shervest Private Wealth Plan. So, hello, Alex. Hey. Good uh, to be very here. excited today to uh, to showcase Alex and and their firm. And uh, what we have is a really unique opportunity. Uh, we're based here in in Toronto. We serve clients in Canada across uh, our northern country, uh, but we also have a few clients that have U.S. assets, either because they worked in the States and now they've moved back to Canada. Um, and we have a wonderful partnership with Shervest, who out of uh, L.A. and the California area can manage some of those U.S. investments. So we really wanted to showcase this unique partnership uh, to showcase Alex and the wonderful work that their team does and really highlight how we work together as a quarterbacking team to uh, manage investments uh, in both sides of the border. So wonderful to have Alex here today. He's going to be taking us through a bit about Shervest, uh, how they work, how they're very similar to how we run our practice, and uh, kind of take us through the ins and outs of what it looks like for individuals who have those type of assets. So without further ado, we'll get started. A few quick disclaimers uh, to keep the compliance folks happy. And uh, as I was sharing with Alex here, uh, it's Thanksgiving weekend coming up for us in Toronto. Uh, Alex is uh they have Thanksgiving a little little later in the year. Uh, so that they'll be having some smoked turkey and we'll be having our our own stuffing uh, this weekend. So I think that time will uh, will meet their compliance burden. so we will get ready to roll right ahead. Perfect. So for clients, you'll know you'll know our team. Uh, Jeff Pear and I are on the advisory side, all have our registered financial planning designation. So very excited about that. We're planning first practice and we have two wonderful assistants, Ose and Leah, that uh, make sure everything rolls smoothly and uh, makes us run as efficiently as possible. So that's our team in a nutshell. Many of these faces you might have seen before. And what we wanted to, to remind everybody is our services in a nutshell. We do financial planning. That's at the core of everything we do. Investment management ties into that. Once we have our plan, we build portfolios to match your tolerance, to match your goals. We also look at insurance. We have Pear, who's a guru on that side of things. We do some tax planning. We have a wonderful team of accountants in-house uh, that help us with all things personal, corporate, uh, state. We also uh, do retirement planning, which ties into financial planning. And part of that, we look at estate planning and business owner planning. So all that in a nutshell. For our existing clients, uh, you know this, but we're sharing this because this matches up very closely with what Alex and Sh the Shervest team also offers clients, which is why this partnership uh, really makes sense and why we wanted to highlight it and share it with you all today. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Alex Keller. And Alex, from here, please take it away. Great. Thank you, Eric. <clears throat> yeah, as Eric had mentioned, I sit on our uh, investment committee over here at Shervest. I'm based out of our LA office. So other members of our committee are also here and our firm is headquartered here. We have offices across the country. So we have offices in Phoenix, advisors in the DC area. Um, I myself, I have 15 years of industry experience. I hold my CFA designation. Um, which stands for Chartered Financial Analyst, and is probably one of the, the hardest uh, achievements I've, I've had to work to accomplish here. Um, I head up our, our trading. So I do uh, manage not only our Canadian assets, but our, our US-based assets. All, all trades do get routed through me. So I'm very familiar with all clients and their unique needs. Um, as I go through here, we have our agenda. So we're going to talk a little bit about Shervest, and then we're going to get into how Eric and I work together as a team. Um, as he had mentioned, a quarterbacking relationship. You can think of Eric and his team as your personal quarterbacks. And, you know, me and Shervest, we are a member of that team that would handle the U.S.-based assets. And we'll get more into that as we progress through here. And I just want to hit uh, hit the share icon there, and then we'll we'll do the the change over there. I still see uh, your face down here. So. Oh, did it not share my screen? There you go. Oh, there we are. Right. Perfect. There we go. You know what? I was uh, I talked about the agenda. We're good. <laughs> we, but you can see my screen now. 
Yes, beautiful. Perfect. So a little bit about Shervest. You know, we we did get our start in 2002, actually in the, the Phoenix area where we still have an office and advisor. Um, we, we pride ourselves on being a white glove firm, if you will, where we really put our clients first. All the decisions we make are in our client's best interest. And that that is our, our sole decision. I won't say our sole decision-making factor, but it's at really at the core of what we do. Um, similar to the relationship that we have in terms of being cross-border, Internally here, we also take a team-based approach. So we have an investment committee, which I sit on. We also have a planning committee that deals solely with planning issues on the U.S. side of the border. <clears throat> and we each have our unique specialty. And I, I find this to be the best approach when managing client funds, because it allows each of us to do what we're best at. And then the client to get the best in each area of their uh, expertise. Is it? There we go. I just have to click the mouse a little harder. Um, I know you guys have a very similar slide to this uh, that you guys have shared with us, um, where it's a, a wheel, but really the at the cornerstone of SureVest and part of why Asante and your practice in particular, Eric, have worked so well with SureVest is we both put planning first. It's really the cornerstone of what helps drive client investments. We like to think that the investment portfolio is a tool in the financial plan to help you achieve your goals rather than having the financial plan or the portfolio dictate the financial plan. So here at SureVest, there's a variety of factors that go into that where I, focus my attention is on the investment management portion. Obviously tax planning and retirement planning are a component of that, but that's where you and I work quite well together as a team. And then we get into cash flow planning as well to kind of determine how much is gonna to need to come from the US side of the border, how much from the Canadian side. And it's, it's a balancing act. And that's why we call it comprehensive financial planning really at the center of it all. Now, as I mentioned, we're a team internally here over at SureVest. I don't make all the decisions myself and neither does anyone else on the team. We find that having different perspectives helps to get best outcome. So these are the other members of our investment committee. We have Rob Luna, who's our CEO and uh, chief investment strategist, went to UCLA Anderson School of Business incredibly sharp guy. You may see him on Fox Business or CNBC, does regular media appearances. We also have Luis Galdamez, who's a CFA, CFP, um, and actually it's, it's not on here yet, but he just got the designation for chartered market technician. Nice. So nice. We, we are a highly credentialed team here and it is something we value. We, we, we're always learning and we're all pushing each other. And I find that's what makes a great team is when everybody's challenging each other. Nice. So with that, I will go into what makes for a good cross-border candidate. So really who, who does this program apply to? It's gonna be individuals moving across the, the US Canadian border with qualified retirement accounts. Now, Qualified retirement accounts, that's just industry jargon or lingo for saying there's some sort of tax benefit. You don't pay taxes when you sell stocks. It might be something like a traditional IRA, a 401k, a Roth IRA, something of that nature. Now, when you move across the border, your taxable assets have to go with you, um, largely because you don't, it's, it's to minimize audits at the end of the day. Um, you don't want to be moving back to Canada and then have taxable assets here in the U.S. and be triggering an audit on the Canadian side because they're wondering, why do you still hold these? How come they haven't moved back with you? And at the end of the day, do you really want to pay two countries taxes on your investments? My guess is no. Um, now, one of the benefits of... <clears throat> 
being in this program and working with us is you have communication between both the Canadian side and the US side. So I know you, you have a highly skilled team over there, Eric. Um, you're a great planner yourself, having worked with you. Um, and we have great planners here on the US side of the border. So you really get the best of both worlds by being in this program while having a cohesive financial plan. So these assets, we're not gonna look at them as, hey, you're a SureVest client that has a SureVest account, and now you gotta go deal with Eric on the Canadian side. It's not at all how we operate. It's gonna be you, know, you quarterbacking that relationship on the plan, and we're just managing that US component for you guys. And then you and I will have that regular communication behind the scenes, and then of course, I will jump on for regular client meetings to discuss the US portfolio, provide market updates. Um, I will add that our investment committee does monthly webinars for our clients to give an update as to what's going on on this side of the border. And they're great, by the way. We've started listening in. They do a fantastic job really sharing what they're seeing and their thoughts. Uh, so it is nice. We, we have our Canadian perspective, but it's great to have uh, the U.S. perspective as well. So uh, kudos Absolutely. to that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you there, Eric. Um, one thing I would like to add is that this can be for clients in either the accumulation or decumulation phase. Um, and that might be a new term for, for some people here. Put a pin in it. We're, we're going to get to that in just a second. But essentially, it doesn't matter whether you're in retirement or if you are in your 30s and have 30 plus years till retirement. So one of the things I want to hit on SureVest and how we actually manage our client funds is our three pillars. The reason I want to hit this up front is it's important as it underlines all of our investment decisions. The three pillars are being dynamic, data-driven, and rules-based. <clears throat> what this essentially means is the next 10 years of the market, we don't think is going to be representative of the last 10 years of the market. Markets change and we have to change with them. Now we do look at data and we follow rules. What this means is any decision we make, whether that's adding an investment to the portfolio, changing an allocation, we're gonna have the data to back that change and we're gonna have rules as to when we change. And this allows us to remove emotion out of the equation. And that's the one thing I've seen in my 15 years of doing this is when clients or even some advisors I've seen in the past, when you get emotional, decisions tend not to be the best. So this, this is an important foundation. Now, as I mentioned, bringing it back to the accumulation phase and the, the distribution phase. In a nutshell, are you saving for retirement? or are you taking money out? That's, that's the best way I can, I can describe this. And there's two unique ways of managing this that I'll get into shortly here. The first is for the accumulation phase. We, we start with Morningstar targeted risk portfolios. And this could be anything from aggressive to moderately aggressive to moderately conservative. All this means is you just want to think about it in terms of how long till you need to start taking money out. You know, if you're in your 20s, I don't really expect you to have much in the way of bonds in your portfolio. If you're 65, 70, about to retire, I would expect you to have a bit more to keep that portfolio stable. Now, we do look at our long term capital market assumptions. That's that LPCMA. And we tweak these portfolios slightly, you know, in a rising interest rate environment, we're going to have more floating rate in there than we will say 30 year bonds, right? And that all flows into our portfolio construction <clears throat> and how we allocate. When we build these portfolios, we use a variety of investments from stocks to ETFs. And then we have a framework that we follow. 
for each of these. And it's a unique framework we follow for which stocks are gonna make it into your portfolio and a different one for ETFs. And then most importantly, monitoring. And this is, this is just watching that portfolio, making sure that these investments are doing what they're supposed to be doing for you. And I'd say that's probably the most important step. Before I get into the distribution phase and kind of and talk a little bit about that, I want to hit two unique types of risks that advisors talk about. The first is market risk. And this is what most clients and individuals are probably most familiar with. Watching the news, if you hear markets are down, that would be market risk. If the market's down, how much is that going to drag down your portfolio? And what's the correlation there? Distribution risk is something that's going to be unique to you as an individual. If you're not taking money out of your portfolio because you're saving for retirement, distribution risk doesn't really impact you. And we'll get into that in a moment here. If you're someone who just retired and you are living off your portfolio, distribution risk is a very real risk and you do not want to run out of money is the gist of that. What I'd like to do is start with an example of distribution risk here. These are mock returns, so they're not real, but there are real market scenarios that we could show. And you could follow up with Eric after this, and we'll have that contact info later <clears throat> to, to schedule something to go over real market returns and how they impact with these hypothetical ones. And these aren't out of the ordinary market returns, you have two scenarios, same returns. It's just in one, the bad returns come first and the good returns come last. In the other, good returns first, bad returns last. The thing to take away from this is the sequence of returns does not matter if you're not touching your portfolio, whether they come first or last, you'll have the same average return and the same ending dollar amount. However, when you're in the distribution phase and we start with a million dollars here with a 4% distribution rate and a 3% inflation rate, I know that might sound low right now given the environment, but for a long-term inflation rate, we model out 3%, meaning that you're giving yourself a raise each year and that's to be expected. We want our clients to keep up with inflation. You end with a portfolio of 2.8 million, after taking 1.9 out over a 30 year time frame, And this is with good returns first. If we have bad returns first, so if a client say retired in 2020, right when COVID hit or beginning of this year, when we went into a bear market, it can be a lot scarier, you know, when you're taking money out and you could potentially run out of money if the portfolio isn't set up properly. In this scenario, the client doesn't make it the full 30 years with these hypothetical returns. Now, we've actually found a way to address this for our clients. It's a way of managing money that is very similar to how a pension fund or an endowment would. You know, working with you, Eric, I assume when you're modeling it out, you know how much clients are expected to take based on their financial plan, right? So that that's why planning is a big linchpin in putting together the portfolio especially for those clients in retirement <clears throat> what we then do is we have a framework we follow to make a portfolio that's really unique to you and we bucket it into tiers so we have four tiers that they get bucketed into each with a unique purpose i won't get too much into the details here because that's not the purpose of this call, but I'm happy to schedule a call with you guys later. Now, when you're in the distribution phase and you're a cross-border client, how do you get your money? Well, it's incredibly easy. Just an ACH or wire. IRA distributions are made in US dollars. This is important because if you worked in the US and you retired to Canada, I assume most places there don't take U.S. dollars. It's got to get converted to Canadian dollars. Well, what makes that easier is working with a large bank that has 
operations on both sides of the board. A lot of our clients use RBC. I can't recommend RBC if officially, if you will, but I can tell you our clients that have used RBC have not had any issues where dollars hit the US side, just journal them over to the Canadian side. Now, a unique thing with the cross-border program, and this is really important to, to make sure when setting this up, there's a form called W8BEN. And what this does is on the US side of things, if you take money out of a qualified retirement account and it's going to another country, there is a 30% mandatory withholding with the exception of countries we have trade agreements with. Fortunately, Canada is one of those countries. So we can get that default withholding rate down to a 15% for clients. I would also add that if you have a 401k, and you're looking at just taking a lump sum out, they're gonna hit you with that 30%. There's, there's no way around that. And this is why it's key to discuss potential cross-border moves ahead of time with your financial advisor. So if they're working with, you know, if you happen to be working with Eric, I know Pear's uh, another phenomenal member of your team here, Eric. Um, discuss with them before making any transitions or any moves because having all the information ahead of time can significantly streamline things for you. And I'd like to add for the client experience, we, we try to make this as smooth as possible for, for all of our clients. Um, <clears throat> so they will have a dedicated financial advisor in this case on both sides of the border. So they'd have you or another member of your team, Eric, over there. Over on this side, they'd have myself or another member of my team. You will have online access via Schwab. So it's a brokerage logon that you'll have, monthly statements from them. And then we also put out quarterly performance reports um, that will get sent to you, as well as our quarterly market commentary that we put out, along with our weekly newsletters and market updates. Um, this week, actually, we're gonna be having uh, our monthly webinar that will be attached to it. So if you happen to not make those, those are all recorded. And then here, I will kick it back over to you with if someone is a fit. Beautiful. Alex, thank you so much for that. I mean, we've, uh, since we learned of this partnership, I think we've, uh, we've started this relationship. We've had uh, two clients successfully, uh, two that, that are in progress, but we've, we've loved, uh, the white glove services, Alex mentioned, I mean, the team does a phenomenal job in, uh, one, making sure that the client is handheld or, or taken all the way through. So, uh, you're not stressed about this. It's a wonderful back office team that Alex has at their disposal and they really take the care and uh, making sure that assets get moved smoothly. There's great communication. So that's how we we are service first financial planning practice. Uh, they definitely share that value. Uh, and that's why we, we really enjoy working with them. Uh, plus they, they do a great job and their portfolios are fantastic too. So uh, we're very proud to be showcasing this. And Alex, thank you so much for taking the time today. So for, uh, for any individual that this might've resonated with, you might've worked in the States, uh, you have some funds that are there and you're not quite sure what to do with it, you don't have a plan, you want to consolidate, please reach out to myself or Pear and uh, we'll do an initial call. We'll see if, uh, if there's a fit and then we'd, we'd reach out to Alex, we'd book a call together and uh, we'd get the ball rolling in that way. So if, if that does apply, please, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free. Our numbers and emails are there and uh, we're more than happy to uh, just have an initial call and see if we can recommend anything. So. Once again, just want a big thank you to Alex, the Shervest team. Uh, we're big fans, and uh, we're so excited to, to be able to partner on this together. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you, everybody.